Aloha and welcome to Thursday, which is the Hawaii Food and Farmer series. I'm your co-host, Justine Spiritu. Matthew Johnson is out on the road delivering vegetables like we love him to do. Uh, just a reminder, so this series is about bringing in farmers and other folks that are related to our food system and help to produce what we eat and make a thriving system together. We also like to go a little outside of Hawaii and see some examples in other places of folks that are uh, producing food and also to kind of feature their entrepreneurial spirit and kind of get the background on food production elsewhere. So today is one of those special episodes. We have Wyatt Bryson, who is the co-owner, along with his brother Hunter Bryson, and they have formed Microlab Solutions as well as Jewels of the Forest. So thank you, Wyatt, for joining us today. Thank you. Pleasure to be back yeah. in Hawaii and here. Yeah, and so as a reminder, Wyatt was a resident of Hawaii for about eight years. Yep. And that's yep. how we met. And so to kind of kind of start, uh, you were here for a while and then moved back to your family farm. So why don't you kind of set that up for us of what was kind of going on with your, your farm and then get into these two different businesses that you started and how they work together and kind of what you're doing. Yeah, okay, so um, I primarily moved over to Hawaii to work with boats. Um, I was working with ships and um, like in Alaska before I moved here. And I kind of wanted to get out of that. I wanted to stay more on the land and um, I uh, uh, just kind of fell into mushrooms. Um, it had been a little bit of an interest in college. I went to Humboldt State University and I graduated with a political science degree. Um, did that for like a second till I realized <laughs> I wasn't going to change the world in a day. And I thought about another way I could do that and more environmentally uh, focused. And I saw mushrooms as a great opportunity, um, especially here in Hawaii. Um, one of the major things that got me interested in mushrooms in Hawaii was uh, partly you working with the mushroom farmer you did at the so farmer's market. Yang, small yeah. kind farm, who's doing uh, portabella and community mushrooms. Yeah, and they're excellent mushrooms. I, you know, I, I wish I, I did, never saw his facility, but. Yeah, uh, I remember being really nervous about that. You're like, oh, let me come check out the operation. I'm like, uh, uh, I don't know if I can let you in. If you're <laughs> all interested in growing it, but okay, yeah, yeah totally. I that. So um, I started doing a lot of research on like, um, um, you know, how mushrooms can work with the environment in Hawaii, and I came across a paper um, done by a graduate student, um, Tracy E. Tisdale, um, for um, her thesis um, at Hawaii State. It's uh, called The Cultivation of Oyster Mushrooms uh, on Wood Substrates in Hawaii. And basically the gist of it, I mean, it's a long paper. You, they have it for free um, on PDF. You can find it online. Um, and it just talked about um, different um, substrates that you could use in, in mushroom production um, here in Hawaii that were actually like a weed um, woods. Basically, they were invasive species. Hmm. Uh, one of them was a strawberry guava. Uh, eucalyptus is another one, ironwood. Um, I forget the exact, <clears throat> if you read the report, it talks about which they actually found worked best. But I started with that and um, I talked to a lot of people and like was kind of getting more into mushrooms and then life changed and I moved to. So you were researching and you were planning on kind of starting the operation here in Hawaii. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and uh, one of the biggest things, you know, overhead with land and costs like that, uh, I kind of figured it was not going to be feasible to try mm -hmm. to do something like that here. It's just, it's so expensive for facilities and land and um, mushrooms can be very expensive to do on a large scale, um, especially with more, some of the different kinds of uh, specialty mushrooms. Um, besides oysters, uh, you need some pretty heavy equipment to do a lot of that work. Um, so I moved back to my family property. It's like our fourth generation um, family farm. We have 15 acres in Northern California in Occidental, which is in Sonoma County. And um, it just kind of developed. My brother and his family work uh, live up there. And um, I built a house with my new son and my new family. And, uh, so did it click right away when you decided to move back that you could translate what you learned and just start that kind of operation where you are? Yeah, I actually acquired a, like uh, a lot of my lab equipment over here in Hawaii um, during 2008, like during the recession. There was uh, through 
there was a, a company that was trying to develop a naturally decaffeinated coffee bean and they lost all their funding during the recession so I picked up like some really nice uh, lab equipment for a steel and uh, that's kind of how I got started. I had like in my room like a, a four foot f laminar flow hood and like a, a six thousand dollar autoclave. You're just like you know? collecting it up. You're like, okay, I got yeah, it. <laughs> it's okay, yeah. let this go. Yeah, you can't. Okay. Of course, like when you find that sort of equipment, it really helps. So now, what Michael Lab Solutions is is uh, we have a full service mycology lab. Um, I'm able to develop cultures and strains for people. Um, we do spawn production. Um, right now, we're doing uh, a lot of. Um, uh, it's called King Strephoria. Uh, it's the garden giant mushroom, and uh, it's great to just put out in wood chips in your yard. And I work with a couple different landscapers that uh, use that in de developing their like permaculture designs and, and their landscaping. Okay, yeah. and then so again, if you can kind of explain the difference between Microlab Solutions and maybe start with with Jewels of the Forest, and that's kind of where the actual mushroom production is kind of centered around. If you can kind of just talk about the the varieties you're currently growing, and I'm kind of curious of, it sounds like you're doing two or three varieties and they each kind of need a specific way to be grown. So if you can kind of explain that. Yeah, so each um, different kind of mushroom has different parameters for their fruiting. So fruiting, uh, the mycelium is the actual mushroom and that's the white stringy stuff you see in the ground on, on logs. Um, and the fruiting body is the reproductive organ and that is the actual mushroom. So um, you can grow mycelium um, pretty easily, but to get it to fruit, it has to have certain conditions. So each mushroom is different. Uh, what we're working with right now is a gray oyster mushroom. Uh, and we're gonna work with some other oyster mushrooms like during the summer. Um, we, you can use a yellow or uh, a pink oyster. They do better in warm weather. Um, so they all have kind of a different temperature requirement. And so what we're trying to do is be able to grow them without uh, uh, as, as less of inputs, um, both uh, you know, uh, electronically and energy-wise um, to grow them. We also do shiitake, uh, shiitake logs. Um, I have a really nice Jupiter strain of shiitake. It's a really big growing one. It takes a little bit longer to grow, but it's a really nice, tasty, tasty shiitake. Um, and then we'd like to move into uh, lion's mane, uh, the heracium. That's a really nice mushroom. And a lot of people there, I see a demand for it. And then so when you're growing mushrooms, is this uh, a product that you're selling direct to consumers or is it something that you have kind of other, other uses for? Like I did notice on your list of like products is like a tincture. Yeah, so with um, so Jewels of the Forest is our actual farm. That's mm -hmm. our farm. When people come to our farm, that's the name they see. And so most of our products are, will have the Jewels of the Forest label on them. Uh, the Microlab Solutions is more of our back end. That's our lab. That's if you want to buy spawn. Um, if you we, you want us to help you grow mushrooms, uh, we're like in. the once we get more established, we'd like to kind of start a, not franchise, but more of a co-op kind of system where we can supply growers with ready to grow mushroom bags and do consulting. And then they harvest, and then we all sell under one label. So it's like a collective where everyone can um, um, help each other out, you know, because it, it is very labor intensive to actually grow the mushrooms. Mm -hmm. You have to do a lot of harvesting, packaging. Um, and right now we have uh, three restaurants um, that we sell to. Um, they're kind of family friends and, and my Hunter, my brother and business partner, uh, has been a chef for over 15 years and is just amazing and has a great connection with uh, the restaurant community. Um, some of our other products is we do an upcycled wine bottle mushroom kit that grows oyster mushrooms. Um, we've, we're still in the testing phase of that, but um, like hopefully by the early next year we'll have a And that's what you product. owe your Kickstarter supporters? Yeah, go find me, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> including uh, me? <laughs> including you, that's right. Thank you for supporting us. So, You're welcome. Yeah, um, and those, you know, we, um, we use all collected upcycled bottles and uh, we drill holes in them and um, it's, that's more of our kind of like get to a different, um, market with people. You right, know? and so, well that's interesting, if, if you're capable of growing mushrooms, and is it only a certain, are you just doing oyster mushrooms in the bottles? 
Um, yeah, I mean, we could start. We haven't played around with anything else. Oysters are just very easy to grow. Like, oysters are so scalable. Like, anyone can grow oysters with just a pressure cooker, uh, some uh, 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 canning jars, and, you know, a glove box, like a clean box to be able to do uh, sterile work in. Um, and, and, and straw, like we just grow them on straw. It's very easy. You don't need a big autoclave. You can pasteurize it um, just by boiling straw. Okay, so. so it's like a good intro to someone who's interested in mushrooms. Like here's something super easy or Absolutely. just interested in, in any, you know, I feel like a lot of times it's like, you know, grow some herbs or something. But yeah. this is another super, or like kombucha to try to start mm -hmm. making stuff. So oyster mushrooms is like a good like starter. Thing. Yeah, and there's many different kinds of oyster mushrooms. And depending on where you are and your climate and temperature, you you could kind of pick and choose like what's best for your environment and they grow wild um, actually I was in Shasta um, earlier this summer for the McLeod Mushroom Festival and we were doing uh, a bunch of hikes and, and mushroom collecting and uh, we found a um, uh, oyster mushroom growing on a tree up there and I was able to culture it and uh, now I have that strain in my strain library so someday awesome. I'll try so and grow it. instead of like having to like buy seeds from catalogs like vegetable farmers you can just like scrape things off in the forest and yeah that's because we have the mycology lab you know like we have some we have like some nice equipment to be able to do that but okay so it's more it than just Oh, you can do it at home. Like, like I could just scrape it off and. Yeah, if you have your sterile technique down and a little bit of knowledge, it's it's not that hard. Um, it one of the neatest things about um, this time right now is that mycology is um, becoming uh, a lot more accessible to regular people. Um, I would suggest definitely look out Radical Mycology and Peter McCoy. Um, he just put out a huge 700-page book that's absolutely amazing. Um, and he, the radical mycology um, kind of what they're trying to do is just bring it to people. So you can go on their website and download a bunch of free zines and free pamphlets that will really help you get started. And uh, that's what we try to do with MycoLab Solutions. Um, I do a lot of educational videos. Uh, we have uh, our Instagram, um, YouTube channel, which is getting a really nice following and it's, it's great to hear. I, like, right, it's cool. Like you were mentioning, there's some products and services that are kind of in development, but you have a lot of people that are looking, I mean, just on your social media, that are looking to you as a resource for information. Yeah, and so, like, with the, my life right now, like, life's cr always crazy, <laughs> but I just had a son, and, like, we moved to California two years ago. So we're, we're still building the business and getting established, but one thing I have been able to do is do social media. Cool. That's awesome. So we're going to take a quick break and we come back. I want to get a little more into how that developed, your interest in growing the mushrooms and then kind of the education side and how that balances out. Okay. So we're going to take a quick break. Aloha. I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday afternoon at 3 p.m. Start your Pauhana weekend off with the show where I talk to people about issues pertinent to Hawaii. You can see my previous shows at my blog, kawilucas.com, and also on ThinkTech's show. Sorry. Aloha. My name is Josh Green. I serve as senator from the Big Island on the Kona side, and I'm also an emergency room physician. My program here on ThinkTech is called Healthcare in Hawaii. I'll have guests that should be interesting to you twice a month. We'll talk about issues that range from mental health care to drug addiction to our health care system and any challenges that we face here in Hawaii. We hope you'll join us. Again, thanks for supporting ThinkTech. Food and Farmer series. I'm your co-host Justine Spiritu. Today we have Wyatt Bryson, who is the co-owner of MycoLab Solutions and Jewels of the Forest. So thanks again for joining us. Um, I wanted to kind of go back and when you when you imagine kind of creating this farm and service, did you always kind of have like that full service spectrum in mind? Like you you knew you wanted to have the lab and you knew you wanted to do the education or did it just start with like, let's just produce some mushrooms or it was always? Yeah, I kind of did it in a roundabout way. Like um, I had the lab 
Um, so that's what I focused on. Um, so I, I'd sell mycology supplies online on eBay and on Etsy. I sell, uh, you know, petri dishes, clean ones for people to use in their own labs, or I sell cultures, liquid cultures, and spawn. And I wanted to kind of stay on that back end because it's a, a bit less work. Um, and that's always good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's nice. Now, growing mushrooms, like what we're moving into now, is actual production. Um, so I, we've really been kind of taking our time and building our market and seeing like what's going to work and who we're going to work with before we just like dump all this uh, big money into it. So we're looking to buy an equipment from Thailand right now, uh, a large autoclave, a bagging machine and a big dirt mixer. And we kind of have all everything else we need. Um, so our next phase will be into like probably medium scale production. We currently have two 25 foot containers and a eight by 10 walk-in cooler that we'll be uh, growing oyster mushrooms in. And then we have outside a bunch of, of shiitake logs, but those are gonna take a year or two to start producing, so. And then just to get an idea of what that looks like, you just, I mean, how your log set up is just like rows of logs. Yeah, so the logs are really cool. I work with a guy in Petaluma. Um, he does a lot of, of production and he has a sawmill. So he um, can make us tons of oak sawdust. Um, and I bring him logs. I have nice access to, um, um, bit, you know, a lot of oak logs um, through different connections in the Arb Arboretum and, you know, different <clears throat> woodworking shops and stuff. So um, basically, yeah, you kind of, you can have them outside. You kind of want to keep them off the ground and away from other microbes and fungi in the, in the soils. And, uh, you know, you just have a sprinkler system or something, have them covered in a shaded area. And then they usually take about a year um, or so, depending on the strain, to fully colonize the logs. We try to keep our logs maybe like, you know, five to six inches round and maybe like, you know, about four. So is this thumb set up? Like, um, yeah. that's like pre inoculating yeah. or? And so each of those little white dots, um, like uh, we have a, a gun um, where we use a sawdust spawn, a shiitake sawdust spawn. We don't use plugs. We do sell shiitake plugs that is on wooden dowels. But this system is so much easier because you take this gun and you just stick it into the sawdust block. But first you stick it into a, um, like a styrofoam, which unfortunately, you know, it's styrofoam, but what are you going to do? You know, there's only so much um, you can be green, I guess. Uh, we try as much as we can, but, you know, we do a lot of plastic bag cultivation. That's kind of how things are done. And unfortunately, it's still plastic, but um, it's kind of how it is right I'll now. I'll forgive you for right now. Yeah, well, thank we'll check you. check back. <laughs> We're trying to find, there's other methods. There's a bottle method that's, like, developed in Japan and stuff, but you need a lot of big equipment to be able to do that. So with those logs, um, you, you have a special bit. We drill holes in there, and then you take this gun, and you plug it into the uh, styrofoam, then you plug it into your spawn block, and then you just put it in the hole, and it sh pull the trigger, it shoves everything in, and keeps it nice and sealed. and. And yeah, and then in about a year or so, you get all the shiitakes just popping off of them. So that brings to my question, I, I wonder why you don't want to just pick one variety and like, wouldn't it be easier to just focus on that? Or like, can you kind of explain why it's, it's worth it to kind of go into these different multiple varieties? It yeah. sounds like a little overwhelming, but. Okay, well, shiitake logs is something like it's an investment, right? So like we, we do a few every, um, you know, like season in the summertime when we have time and then we just let them sit there and we don't have to do a lot of work after that, okay. you know? And so, like I said, it takes, you know, depending on the strain a year to maybe more with some, but then they can fruit up to like five years and um, you, you know there's a couple different revenue streams that you can do with the logs you can a sell the shiitake straight you know either to farmers markets or restaurants or you know whatever your market is um, but you can also sell the actual logs um, and to be used again for yes or for people to take home and grow their own you okay. know so it can be reused to grow more mushrooms yeah so okay. like I could fruit it for like a year or six months and then I can sell the log to someone and they can take it home and they can fruit it for a couple of years and go pick their own shiitakes, you know? So we're going to be doing a shiitake class. Uh, we do teach a class at uh, uh, the San Rosa Finley Center, which is like a activity center. It's mm -hmm. a, a county center in Santa Rosa, California. So yeah, we have a bunch of cool events coming up. We're doing uh, an ethnobotany uh, festival on um, it's the September 24th when I get back to Hawaii. 
um, which is going to be really fun. We're going to have a, a like free kits that everyone can come and cool. make their own mushroom oyster mushroom bags and take home with them. Going back to some of the the products again, so you can sell these mushrooms to the restaurants, yeah. but some of the other products you mentioned, um, like value added stuff, was like the mushroom jerky. I've never heard of that. Did you guys make that up or? Um, <laughs> no, like actually, um, so my brother Hunter's wife um, is from Thailand, and uh, she was bringing these uh, like kind of topping uh, mushroom toppings and uh, they were like a jerky basically oh they're so tasty and there's you can get all different kinds like um, um, just different kinds of mushrooms oysters and like my talkies uh, my talkies are excellent and uh, they're like uh, with shoyu and uh, teriyaki and some mm -hmm. sesame seeds and they're kind of like a futakaki like kind of okay. topping and um, I uh, started looking up to see what other products were on the market for mushroom jerkies because it's a vegan, like all natural snack. And um, there's like one guy kind of towards the East Coast, I think that was selling them online and he's getting all his mushrooms from overseas. And uh, I mean, they produce a lot of mushrooms out of Asia and they're very cheap and you know, it's, it's a good deal, but we want to be growing our own, you know, and have something local yeah. and, and sustainable. And so the mushroom jerky, uh, we, we've played around with some different, um, you know, recipes because my brother is a chef. Yeah. Um, so we'll see how that turns out. Um, for different products and revenue streams, uh, the cool thing about um, mushroom production is that we could be doing kind of what we're going to be doing anyway, mm -hmm. and we could kind of have like different avenues where we can create revenue streams. So like I do lab work no matter what, so I can sell those cultures and make a little bit of money from that to my colleges and amateur mycologists, or I could sell the spawn, which I'm making already to people that want to grow their own mushrooms and make their own substrate, you know, or what we would like to do in the future, maybe like kind of a five year plan or so is to set up that kind of co-op or collective system where we supply people with ready to grow bags. They do all the, the harvesting and we supply packaging. We sell them under one label. So that was kind of like the end goal because I don't necessarily want to be producing, um, um, it is a, it's very labor intensive you know we um, we're going to be doing kind of a Asian style with a smaller bag and many many bags um, using a soda spawn um, so yeah some of the other products uh, the uh, mushroom kit a wine bottle kit like there's a lot of mushroom product kits out there um, and ours is smaller so it's not like really to grow a lot of mushrooms to Not eat on them. like a commercial scale. Yeah, it's more so. of, it's a cool thing, like we're going to be marketing it to, uh, because we live in Sonoma County, which is a very big wine um, place, we can, um, you know, there's a lot of interest in wine, there's a lot of aftermarket products. Um, we actually, Ecovative is a company um, that has developed a packaging that's made from mushroom mycelium and they have a wine bottle shipper kit. So I'm in talks with them about purchasing uh, their shipping kits. So when we sell our, our, uh, our wine bottle mushroom kit, it can be shipped in mycelium, wow. in mushroom mycelium, <laughs> which is pretty cool. And that's more, uh, we want to do a Kickstarter project at some point to raise more funds to kind of take us up to the next level. And uh, that's a great reward. And it's something anyone can do, any novice. Like, all you do is you take the bottle home, you take uh, the little sticker off the hole, you soak it overnight, and then about two weeks, you get oyster mushrooms growing out of it. That's awesome. Yeah. So the way you're doing this, can this be done anywhere? Yeah. Is, can this could be replicate? Anyone could kind of replicate your... Yeah, and absolutely. Like oyster mushrooms, like I said, are so easy and they're very prolific. And same with King's Trephoria, um, in that, uh, I mean, you just, you're using straw and the basic tools you'll need are like a, just a pressure cooker where you can get very cheap online for either used or new, um, you know, and some just a kitchen and some basic materials, some plastic bags and uh, some other things. And they're very easy on my uh, website, you know, like we have a lot of videos and we, we try to help people uh, who want to start growing. And what's your website? If you Our website is mycolabsolutions.com. And then also our YouTube channel, everything is Mycolab Solutions. And then on Facebook, we also have a Jewels of the Forest Fungi Farm um, uh, site. But uh, right now we're just focusing on the Michael Lab Solutions until we really have like our products out and going. 
Okay. Now. And so for that idea of like the co-op, um, where you're kind of supporting other mushroom farmers, is that is that helpful? It doesn't. So it doesn't really currently exist, or maybe not where you're from. Well, I mean, um, the kind of where I, I, you know, I got the idea was talking to other mushroom farmers. You know, um, there's a, a guy um, in uh, Pennsylvania, Will, uh, William Padilla. Uh, he's an awesome guy. I've gotten some cultures from him. His company is called Mycosymbiotics. You should definitely check him out if you're on the East Coast um, in PA. And, um, yeah, so I talked to him. I got some cultures from him. He's kind of growing at a couple different locations, it sounded like. And I was like, okay, well, you know, why couldn't I help someone out that wants to move into a different industry, who wants to do something on their own and be independent with sustainable farming? And, I mean, you know, on large scale, you do kind of need this bigger equipment, autoclaves and bagging machines and stuff. And it's very so it's kind of like intensive. high upfront costs to, yes. to kind of get into it with all the equipment. Yeah, so if I can be able to, to put that initial investment in, but then to be able to provide like a basically a, a plug-and-play system. So where they're just like harvesting, which is the more labor and time consuming thing, which I don't want to spend my time on, you know, I want to be doing some cool stuff like, you know, doing science research. Cool too. And, oh, yeah, it's fun. You know, it is you know, harvesting mushrooms. It's great when you have a whole wall of oyster mushrooms and yeah. you're not like, you know, you're harvesting like hundreds of pounds. It's really cool. It's neat to see, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, I want other people to be able to like prosper and like have a good life and create yeah. their own wealth. From doing something cool well like that's that. cool i always love to hear about businesses that then have the element where they're supporting those that are kind of coming after them or, or yeah. like I said, when, it, when it is kind of like an industry that can work collaboratively and then to kind of go back to the the products that you are supplying to the restaurants mm -hmm. is there alternatively are there other local sources for it or what you're not providing would they be importing from somewhere else um you know california down kind of like monterey area there there there's a bunch of mushroom farms down there we just went and visited one and like got to see their their site it was pretty cool um and then locally kind of right around my area is a, another big very big mushroom farm and they do do some oyster mushrooms but they they kind of focus on other kinds and i don't want to compete with them so i'm, I'm trying to stick to products that they're not doing okay. um like uh, lion's mane which i will get into which i've had actually a lot of um, demand for people asking for lion's mane uh, which is it's it's a really neat mushroom um and it's very tasty yeah, so, so just flavor-wise, it's different. Yeah, it's very different. And oyster mushrooms are great, you know. I mean, like, they're, they're just so easy. It, it's a great mushroom to start out with. So that's where we're starting. Okay, so we have one more minute. Um, what's one, what's your next event that you guys have coming up? Okay, so on September 24th, we're going to be doing the, uh, it's um, the Ethnobotany Festival and uh, Symposium. I think I said that right. Um, it's put on by Kathleen Harris, who is an old family friend, and she has a uh, ethnobotany or kind of bookstore right down in Occidental. And so it's um, it, it's going to be tons of educational free booths, and people can come. And there's all sorts of workshops and and speakers. It's going to be really it's a real educational. Yeah, really educational. Um, I, I on my Instagram, I just posted a picture of the flyer. Um, I. I Unfortunately, don't have the, the website right on me right now, but check out our Instagram, Michael Lab Solutions, um, and it will be on our website shortly. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that wraps it up. Thank you so much for coming on. Super proud of you and stoked to hear what you've started out there. Great. Thank you. Awesome. All right.